Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we will talk about Delta Live Tables. We will go through what Delta Live Table is, why we need Delta Live Table, and what all features it provides. Okay, so let's get started. So, first of all, what is Delta Live Table? So, Delta Live Table is a framework. Okay, it's a framework given by Databricks. Okay, now <clears throat> when we say framework, right, let, let's try to understand this term, right, when we say framework, it means there will be some functions, right, or some reusable classes, right, so there will be some functions given by the framework itself, okay, DLT. Now these functions, we can use it, right, we can reuse this function, that's what called framework is, right, we have some code which we can leverage in our own code, right? That's what framework called about, okay? It's a skeleton, right? Which we can use or which we can leverage in our code. Now, what Delta Live Table is? Why, what makes it special, right? So, framework is fine, right? But it's a declarative framework. It's a declarative framework. Now, what declarative means, okay? We, we need to understand what declarative means, right? So, as I said, in framework, you will have functions, you can reuse it, right? In similar way, declarative frameworks also have some functions only, right? They are function only, right? But here, we call them as annotations. Annotations. Now, what annotation is and how to, I mean, code it, right? We will go through the syntax later. But first of all, what annotation is? So if someone asks what annotation is, it is again a function. Okay? Nothing new. It's a function. We call it as an annotation because we use it as a uh, as a statement symbol. Okay? You can think of as a instructions. Okay? You are giving instruction to your function that you will do this and on top of this, this is my instruction. You have to perform this as well. Okay? It is just like a function, right? In function also you say the similar thing, right? This is the code which I am giving and you, you do this thing. Same thing annotation. It's just that the syntax is different. We will talk about the syntax later on. Okay? But it's a annotation. And annotations works as a statement. You can think of as a statement. Okay? Now, why we need delta live tables okay that is the that is the most important question why we need it right so delta live table provides you an end to end uh, what to say orchestration okay for your delta live pipelines so you must be familiar with that approach right which we generally follow with our our architecture right bronze silver and gold right everybody's familiar with it right so till now what we were doing we are generally creating one notebook for bronze then for silver and then for gold maybe you use data warehouse or whatever it is right but but there is one layer gold right and then on top of this you provide the power bi reports or you will give this data to uh, for ai and ml and all right but <clears throat> okay but the problem here was that we are creating multiple notebooks to handle such things okay and uh, again, we have to write different piece of codes for streaming. There will be different notebook or different code for for batch related data. There will be different notebook, right? And then we don't know how to control this entire flow, right? So on top of this, we generally use ADF, right, for our orchestration, correct? And then you have to explicitly handle the the data quality piece, right? And then again, you have to uh, use the ADF for the for triggering this entire process, right? And even you you can, I mean, you have to have that uh, other mechanism also available like retry mechanism. If if the pipeline fails in the ADF, you you try all these activities, email to the customer, right? So all these activities generally was handled by some other application or you have to come up with your own code to handle all these activities, right? But now with the Delta Live Tables, you will get all these things, 
whatever I talked about, right? You don't have to go to ADF even to orchestrate your process, right? You can orchestrate here. You will get the lineage, okay? So these are all the features or the benefits what it provides, okay? So that's the beauty of Delta Live Table. Now, in the Delta Live Table, as I said, right, you can handle the uh, handle your uh, batch data as well as streaming data and all, right? That is again a feature and, and these are the features, right? On top of this, you will have another feature that this DLT, right, by default, it use auto loader even. I mean, when I say by default means you can use auto loader here, right, to, lo to, uh, to ingest your data if it is a streaming data, right? Okay, and the beauty is even the same code you can use for the batch files as well. You don't have to go and change your code, right? Because if, if you go with the streaming, right, internally, actually it's a micro batches, right? We all know, right? It's a very uh, small uh, level micro batches, you can say, right? So you don't have to worry about here. You don't have to rewrite your code and all those things, right? The, or the DLT will handle, DLT will take care. It will give you an exception handling process as well. It will give you a data quality process as well. On top of this, it also provides you the CDC, change data capture, right? You have an inbuilt mechanism available in the DLT for your slowly changing dimension, SCD1 as well as SCD2, okay? So these features are also available in the DLT. We will go through the practicals as well, right? But I'm just trying to showcase you what are benefits and what are limitations was there earlier and how it overcomes, right? Now, apart from this, as I said, right, you don't have to go to EADF and create your pipeline to orchestrate the entire process, right? Delta Live Table generates its own pipeline, okay? And you can see the lineage in it, okay? How or what is the sequence it's following? How your data is flowing in the real time, you can see it. Okay, even you can see like how many records get processed, how much time it took, what all records, I mean not what all records, but what is the count of record which got failed. So you will have that matrix or you will have that uh, uh, feasibility available here. Okay, now there are different type of modes available into the pipeline, right? As I said, if you wanted to run your... Uh, uh, this entire flow into continuous mode or the trigger mode, right? Everything is available. You have the retry feature available already. You have the email mechanism already available. Okay, if there is any failure, you can send an email, right? And on top of this, right? After all these features, right? It also provides you one more feature called optimization, right? So on this all, I mean, if you create any DLT table, right? any DLT table, right? End of the day, there is a job which will be triggered by default. It's a default job which will be triggered from the DLT side to optimize your Delta table. You don't have to worry about the code, the optimization now because it will handle it automatically at some time. You don't have to even configure that code. You don't have to uh, even, even uh, think about that code, right? How it works. It is there. It will work by default internally. And there is one more feature called append flow. Okay, we will go through with each of these features in detail. But what is append flow now? So if you wanted to ingest the data from multiple sources, let's say like this is your one table T1, this is your another table T2, this is another table T3, right? And you wanted to ingest this data into a single table, okay? That, that feature is also available. You can do that, okay? So these are the features and these are the benefits which DLT provides. Okay, now few of these features are in public preview right now, but yeah, they are available and, and, the, and the product is being matured day by day, okay, from the Databricks side. Now, the only, uh, the only problem or the only limitation I see with the DLT is, is that you should use Unity Catalog to, to get all these, it's all these features available in it, right? Uh, and uh, the second thing is, if you wanted to run your code, right, you have to have the pipeline creation done for that particular notebook, right? You cannot just run your notebook. You can run your notebook, but you will not see the output, right? So you, end of the day, if you wanted to see the output, right, you have to trigger the pipeline. 
that's the only way you will see the data flowing inside the table otherwise data will not flow in the table you just see the syntax are correct or not that's what you can see if you are running just a notebook but if you are running the pipeline you will see actual working actual lineage or actual processing okay so i i hope you you will get some sense of the dlt and what all benefit it's it's give us okay so in the next lecture we will go through one by one each of these steps in a practical way how we can create the dlts uh, what all different ways we can create the tables and all right so i hope this video will be helpful for you guys thank you thanks for watching this video bye